France was unfortunately the slowest off the mark in the dreadnought race of all the major navies at the time, to the extent they ordered an entire class of fairly sizeable semi-dreadnoughts the year after HMS Dreadnought was actually launched. As a result, the first French dreadnoughts were ordered in the middle of the second generation of construction, which shows in some of their design features. The class comprised four ships, Corbet, France, Jean Bar, and Paris, or Paris. A unique feature of their design was a much greater concern with underwater hits, and without the comprehensive torpedo defence systems developed later on, the designers decided to extend the armour belt well below the waterline compared to other ships. As a result of the greater area covered, the armour, at 11 inches thick, was thinner than British or German contemporaries. At 25,000 tonnes fully loaded, the main armament consisted of six twin turrets carrying 12-inch guns, a pair super-firing forward, another pair super-firing aft, and a turret on each side. This gave a heavier broadside than the first generation dreadnoughts, but the use of wing turrets meant the overall firepower was somewhat less than most second generation ships. The weight of the forward turrets meant that the ships took a lot of water over the prow in heavy seas, and due to the relatively small maximum elevation, the guns were also somewhat short-ranged. The secondary battery consisted of 22 casement-mounted 5.4-inch guns, which ironically for a dreadnought actually outranged the main battery due to greater elevation. A handful of anti-aircraft guns and four torpedo tubes, each with three torpedoes, completed the ship's loadout. The engines were designed to give the ships a speed of 21 knots, although in practice they actually proved to be slightly faster than this. In World War I, with the North Sea locked up by the Royal Navy, the French Navy, or Marine Nationale, spent most of its time in the Mediterranean, and all four ships would spend most of their time here, although the Jean Bar and France were on their way back from Russia when war was declared, but as it turned out, the German Navy was either unaware of them or unwilling to try to intercept them. Their primary duties consisted of escorting French troop convoys from North Africa and helping Italy to keep the Austro-Hungarian navy bottled up. In the course of these duties, they managed to catch an Austro-Hungarian cruiser trying to blockade Montenegro and sink it, before providing fire support against the enemy army. Jean Bar was also torpedoed at the end of 1914 by the submarine U-12, and in true French fashion, the torpedo hit the wine store. But they made it to Malta for repairs, although this incident meant that most battleships were of limited use for a while, because the close waters of the Mediterranean, and the lack of an anti-submarine doctrine early in the war, meant that it was dangerous for larger ships to operate too near the coast of an enemy that had access to submarines. After the war, the France had the dubious distinction of being the only full-size dreadnought battleship to be sunk after striking a rock in Quiberon Bay in 1922. The survivors would be modernised several times, but they had a huge list of weaknesses, including, but not limited to, no direct control for the main guns, poor elevation of the main guns, weak protection against torpedoes, thin deck armour, and coal firing and this meant that they became obsolete compared to more modern German and Italian ships, even though some of these issues would be fixed. Paris has a brief period of excitement bombarding coastal batteries near French Morocco after local forces launched an attack in 1925, but by the 1930s they were all designated as training ships. At the start of World War II, they were ordered back into service, and Corbet attempted to bombard the 7th Panzer Division in the defence of Cherbourg, but without spotters, this was somewhat ineffective. Paris performed a similar role at Le Havre. After the Paris suffered minor bomb damage, both it and Corbet sailed for British ports with evacuated men, and were present on the 3rd of July 1940, when they were seized as part of a plan to stop the French fleet falling into Nazi hands. Paris served the rest of the war as a depot and barrack ship before being returned to France in 1945 in the same role and being scrapped in 1956. Corbet was likewise used as a depot ship until the D-Day landings when she was scuttled as a breakwater for one of the temporary harbours that was set up three days after the landings. Jean Bar was demilitarised and became a school hulk in Toulon in 1936 and stayed there throughout the war. Once the Germans occupied Vichy France, she was used for experiments with large shape charge warheads until she was sunk by the Allies in 1944 and was subsequently broken up in place starting in December 1945. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.
Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.